Mission. My name is Hamza and I am uh, Pakistan Remain founder and uh, organizer. Um, here in the session, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how you can get started with uh, Scratch Orgs. What are the Scratch Orgs and uh, how you can set it up um, completely from scratch. Uh, so this session is uh, mostly for developers or architects or who persons who are uh, willing to get knowledge of uh, Scratch Orgs. So in this session, um, we're going to discuss um, about the Scratch Orgs, their benefits, what is uh, Dev Hub and how to enable that and why it is necessary. Then uh, Salesforce uh, DX environment and project. And at last, we'll do uh, create the Scratch Org. So Scratch Orgs. So before that, let's discuss about Salesforce DX. Salesforce DX introduces a new type of Salesforce environment in Scratch Orgs. These are orgs consisting of Salesforce code or metadata that can be easily created or destroyed, helping to speed up the standard development overflow. Using this Scratch Org, you can spin up um, whenever you want. Maybe you, you can do that uh, when you start a new project. You can do that when you are creating a new feature branch. When you are testing a new feature, um, creating an automated testing. Um, you can also do uh, development tasks directly in an org. So there are many things that you can do with these Scratch Orgs. But one thing to remember that these Scratch Orgs do not replace sandboxes. And these are complement sandboxes. So they are great for temporary deployments. We typically use them for the peer review and a way to get enhanced test coverage and automations. So the best thing about these sketch ops is that they are source driven and they are disposable deployments. So you can push whatever source you want even than just single thing. You don't have to create a sandbox and push all your metadata through that. You can simply use the Salesforce DX commands, as your CLI commands, and uh, get your org ready right away within no time. These sketch orgs are fully configurable, which means that if you need a person account to be enabled in your sketch org, you don't have to log a case. Um, as you usually have to do for the production or the sandboxes. You can simply do provide the configuration on your SFDX project and bingo, you will have your org created with a person account enabled. Similar to this, you can also configure multiple fe other features as well, like multi, multi currency and whatnot. Basically, this sketch box is powered by the Salesforce DX. Undoubtedly, Salesforce has transformed the way of managing and developing Salesforce applications with the interaction of Salesforce DS. Salesforce DS is an innovative suite for tools designed to provide Salesforce developers with a more modern user experience across the entire development lifecycle. It enhances the team deployment, development, and collaboration, facilitates automatic testing and continuous integration as well, and it makes the release, uh, release cycle more efficient and flexible. To retrieve and push metadata to an org, Salesforce DX uses the force.com migration tool and also known as Salesforce environment. While task automation, it is preferred to create a disposable environment for testing specific code changes rather than making those changes in a shared organization. This is where Scratch org comes into the picture. Benefits. We already talked about the benefits. Let's just just more deep dive into it. So sketch off supported add-on features can be enabled within sketch off that may not already exist in production environment. That's that's what I mentioned that, that's regarding the um, uh, personal accounts. You have complete control over where you can you do your testing. You can test a single issue, a feature branch pre-merge or post-merge, like you do with Git. With the Scratch Orgs, the source of truth for every task is the version control repository, which is your local work. 
Use this patch or for the continuous integration and development with GitHub or any other version control system. And at last, Developers can create multiple scratch orgs and assign them to a specific DX project. That's a very amazing part. Every org has a specific limits for their daily and uh, for, for the daily creation of these scratch orgs, orgs. So you can create a limited number of orgs right with a click. I mean, with a command, I'm sorry. You have to, to, to get the benefit of this cash ox, you have to enable the dev hub. You can enable the dev hub with a single steps in your production org. Dev hub also can be configured in your dev org as well. Dev hub is, 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 the, is the main Salesforce org that enables you to create and manage sketch orgs. The sketch orgs are known as temporary Salesforce environments where you do the bulk development work within this new source-driven development paradigm. You can use the dev hub as a production and the centralized repository where all the code merges from the various developers and all those codes stores on your local directory. It's not necessary to enable dev hub if you plan to use Salesforce CLI with only sandboxes until you plan to create second generation packages. The second generation packages use a sketch org during the package generation process. Today in this event, we had a session early in the morning regarding these two, uh, two GP packages. So if you have missed that, you can go to the replay tab on the left hand side, you can watch the two GP packages uh, session to more, learn more about it. Dev Hub uh, uh, can be a production or a business org and it's, it's safe and doesn't cause any performance or customer issues. Dev Hub uh, compromises objects with permissions that allow admins to control the level of access available to a, to a user and an on. Similar to the person account functionality, once you have enabled the Dev Hub, you cannot disable it again, but there's no harm in it. You can do it uh, without any any issues. So as, as I mentioned, it does not occur any performance issues in your org. But I would still prefer not to do that directly on your production uh, because there, there are some permission changes that may occur uh, at your production. Or you can do that on the dev org. Try, go to uh, register a new dev org and try uh, playing around there before enabling in your production. So these are simple steps. You go to um, the setup tab. In a setup tab, you search for the dev hub. And once it's open, you can click on the dev hub option as is shown on this screen. On this screen, you can see that this screen has the enable checked box, which is not the sale, I mean, which is not uh, changeable. So once it's enabled, it's enabled. I'm coming back to the screen to see if there are any questions for me. If not, then I'm gonna continue. All right, great. I'm continuing with uh, my presentation. So once your dev hub is enabled, now you are eligible uh, to create these sketch orgs using that. But for that, you have to create your Salesforce DX environment and your first project. And how you can do that? First, you need to make sure you have all the prerequisites, which is you have to install the VS code, which is the recommended IDE from Salesforce. VS Code is available for all the platforms, either you have the Linux, Windows, Mac, or any other platform. It could be CentOS or Ubuntu. They are, it's available and it's open source as well. You just have to download it. Once it's downloaded, the next thing that you need to download is the SFDX CLI. I've provided the URLs here, or also you can find it on the Google as well. Just simply type SFDX CLI, you will find the URL and you can download it then. These softwares are very light in weight, especially VS Code, uh, until you install more plugins. So once it's done and you have the VS Code ready, open your VS Code and type Control Shift and P. Actually, before that, uh, so this is a, this is a window uh, where the VS Code looks like. Uh, 
So you have installed the VS Code, you have installed the SFDX command. So what you need to do, open this uh, VS Code and install this SFDX extension, Silver extension, which is essential uh, to work with Salesforce. When, when you open the VS Code, you have this boxes icon. You need to click here. When you click here, it will open all the listed extensions that are available, free, available to you. There, search for Salesforce Extension Pack. As it's shared on the screen, this is how it looks like. And there's, there's going to be a small button right below it. The good thing about VS Code is, is it's like a Chrome browser where you can install many plugins which are available online on the web store. Similarly, with VS Code, there are many developers uh, who created uh, amazing plugins for Salesforce. You can utilize them freely by simply searching here, or you, you may find those plugins available on a GitHub with all the instructions that you, you need to do. So, but before getting it, when getting into any plugin, you have to make sure that you have Salesforce extension pack installed. This extension package will install all the um, important or basic pro, uh, plugins to your VS Code, including CLI integration, Apex, Aura components, LWC, and whatnot. So, when this pack is ready, you are good to go to connect with your Salesforce Aura. Then. If you are on Windows, you need, to, you need to use the command Control shift p And if you are on Mac, you need to use command shift p On this command, once you run this command on your keyboard, you will find similar options available. As you can see, the difference between different commands here. The first two are the generic of the VS Code, which starts with debug or ESLint. But if you look for the third, fourth, and fifth option, those starts from SFDX, which means those are coming from the extension package that you just installed. The first option of the SFDX says the create and set up project for ISV debugging. That's for the ISV partners who are creating the apps for, for to, to publish on the app exchange. This gives them more uh, debugging functionality so that they can more uh, uh, they can debug more in details and find it and uh, help them to uh, get more details of all that what they are, they are doing. The second one is the create project. This is a simple command which creates a simple project for you for the Salesforce project, which will have the basic base data already created, like a template. The third one is the create project with manifest. Manifest is basically the if you uh, using this manifest you will have the XML file of the package created automatically. If you are a developer, you, you may know how important is the package of XML file. So I would recommend you to do go with the project, create project, if you don't have anything to, to retrieve initially. But if you have anything to retrieve initially, go with the project with manifest by which you will have the access for the package or XML, which you can modify and um, get your content uh, retrieved from your Salesforce org. So right now, we are just setting up the VS Code and our, our environment. We are just not, we are, I'm not talking about the scratch rocks at the moment. Just forget about the scratch rocks. Obviously, not forget, do not forget about it. Just uh, keep that keep that set, separate. So once you're done, once you create this new project, um, you will find on the left-hand side a list of files created, which was folders created automatically, also files as well. That means your project is ready. But that project is not linked with any any org. So for that, you need to run your command again. So if you're on Windows, Control Shift P or Mac, Command Shift P. Once you type this command, you will have similar window options. But but now if you if you think see about it, you will also find the same commands again. But here is the search functionality here. You can search for the auth, and you will end up having the three or more options for the SFDX. The first one is the authorized a dev hub. Dev hub is going to be the same org where we have enabled the dev hub. Even if you select this dev hub through here and have it enabled from your org, you will not be able to make your connection successful. So make sure you have enabled the dev hub from your 
uh, within your dev or, uh, dev or or production and then use this command. Once you click on the dev hub, it will open up a new window and uh, which will take you to the browser where you need to authenticate um, and using auth 3.0. And once you provide the credentials successfully, it will make the connection. So now you have your project ready for your VS code with the link to your dev hub. You can also use some, some couple of the command on SFDX, um, like the SFDX force or list. I don't want to complicate it because this is for this, you know, how to get started. So um, I'm just keeping it as a, much as layman I can. So once you're done with this, you have your org authenticated with the VS Code, your project is ready. The next thing you need to do is to now create the sketch org. Same as we have done before, simply use Command Shift P for the Mac or Control Shift P for the Windows. It will open up the same option window. This option window is your friend. You can use any command if you want. You can search for, for any of them. And this also search for the plugins as well. So if you have installed multiple plugins on your PS code, all those commands will also be accessible through here. So you don't have to go back to you know, your plugins manager or somewhere to find the available commands that you can run. You just have to use this uh, keyboard shortcut, which should bring you the whole menu. So now when you click on that, you will find the first option that's, that's called create a default scratch or you can simply search for the create S or just type the scratch. You will end up with having these values. So when you click a click of create a default scratch or the magic will run. And the next thing it will ask you the definition file. This is the default path of the definition file. And this is the definition file where you provide all your configurations before creating the or this is the, this is the file where you define the I, I want uh, person account enabled I need multi currency enabled I need a security sessions to be having this value so all of the configuration you may find on the multiple URLs above on, on the internet by simply Google uh, by Googling it uh, so this is the file where you have your configuration so at this stage VS Code wants you to provide the, the definition file you can create multiple files and here you can provide the latest file that you have. But if you are a newbie or getting started with that, I'll recommend you to keep with that, keep with the started one. And first try creating a sketch org. And uh, it's just simple that you just have, you want to create a sketch org, you can modify your definition file again and create another sketch org. So when the sketch org is ready, I mean, uh, once your definition file is ready, you can click on it or select a file and now it will ask you this scratch or name this name is basically alias which is assigned to you on your local pc so if you want to know which or sketch org is for what this, this is the name that will keep reminding you so this is a sketch for for what purpose here comes the naming convention best practices so make sure you name though your sketch orders in, in a meaningful way so that you remember what it is for when I started with the sketch box earlier, I just tried to type this test or maybe some big names, which, uh, and as, you, as you know, you can create multiple sketch orgs, which actually creates head, a headache for you to find which one was the weird, which has the latest data. Uh, but the good thing is that you don't have to worry about a sketch orgs because all the source is available on your local directory. Even if your sketch org get lost, you are not losing anything because all the data you have is under your VS Code process. You can simply run the same commands and end up, end up creating the same sketch on and simply push your source over to it. But the naming is very important. So if you are doing your, doing your test project, make sure you name them perfectly. Once the naming is done, it will ask you for how many days you want to keep it alive. That's the best part, and, to, and that's the best consideration you need to make sure uh, before uh, getting into the sketch orgs that the sketch orgs are not for uh, unlimited time. There's a very limited time, and to be specific, it's only for 30 days. 
you can keep a single scratch or maximum for 30 days. And thank God Salesforce has provided us this configuration that you can set your own days yourself. So let's say you are doing a UAT for your client. You need to just create a sketch or for a week, not more than that. You just need to create a sketch or and enter the day seven so that it will keep for seven days. And after seven days, it will expire automatically. So you don't have to worry about deleting or make, make, keeping them expire every time they are not in use. So 30 is the maximum day that you need to do. And the, another thing that you cannot extend it. There's no option to extend it because all the source is available on your live local directory. This means whenever on your old sketch or to expire, you can create a new one with the same local source. Once you enter this information, now sketch or is created and it will return you the ID. Once the sketch or is ready, it will be marked as default on your VS code. Now you can open the default default or by pressing the same command control shift P and select open default or which will open a new window in your browser automatically and you will be logged in there where you can you can make sure you have a sketch already having the same definition and everything along with that so in the conclusion i would like to say that Salesforce takes a modern approach in the Salesforce development life cycle you can keep a particular piece of work isolated for development as well as testing with a special this development environment gives you several major advantages over traditional sandbox development environments that allow you to quickly turn ideas into solutions without disturbing the actual development life cycle. Developers can use these types of org to build and test packages. Moreover, developer can create multiple sketch orgs and assign them to a specific DX project. Plus, not just that, developers can also use these sketch orgs to work on a single project. Let's say you have a different simple project and you're working on every developer, let's say three developers are working on a project, three developers can create a different sketch org for themselves and at the end they can merge their code right away, which was a real problem uh, earlier uh, with the Salesforce. Because if any developer is working on a single class, we do face that, okay, your class has been overridden by me because I, I did push the latest release. So this can also be um, handled through this. I think that's all. I do not have anything. Did you have any questions for me? Um, you can use the QA section. Okay, I can see that there are, of course, there's a question actually by Anish. So do we need to do we need to do anything extra to get some features enabled or it is done after all creation example is been an org with field service package trial? That's a very good question. So one while you, uh, what, remember when I was talking about the definition file. In the definition file, you can assign the which license you need also. Even if you need for the self sales sales cloud or service cloud, you can define your license there. So when your org is created, sketch org is created, you will have those license provision. That's the best part. So sorry, with the dev hub, uh, you can even uh, you can create the financial service cloud sketch org. It, it doesn't matter if you have your um, portion has it or not, because this is because of this definition file. But there's a catch. So your org will be created with those licenses, but th the package will not be installed in it. So you have to install those packages yourself manually. You can do that by using the URL, but the good thing about SFDX is it is all about commands. I didn't cover the commands on this session, but SFDX is all about commands. You can run a simple command, which will install the package right away. You will find all this, all these, these information uh, available on internet. Many blogs are written there. You can also look for my blog at mmsas.com. You will find more details over there as well. I hope uh, I need to share that to answer your question. Uh, so feel free to ask any question if you have. I hope that this uh, session was helpful for you to get even get started with uh, scratch ops because I, I, to be honest, I, I found many people very hesitant getting started with scratch ops because they love uh, the sandboxes and their uh, uh, and how it works initially. And to be honest, it's. Uh, that's that's how that's how human body works. We do not like change easily. So, but once you adopted the change, you will like it more. 
So I'll recommend you to um, get started with this fresh orgs. Try it. Play, try playing around with the developer org yourself and see you see and you will see yourself you will start learning the SF, uh, Salesforce DX more than the, the other uh, than the sandbox approaches. All right, that's all. Um, thank you so much.